to my garden. I'm Elena and today is June 17th. So I'm gonna give you a little tour of the state of my garden. So if you look here first to the left, you're going to see all of my beautiful potato plants. Now I just recently put down some compost and mounted it around the base of the plants and put mulch on top of them. The plants are starting to flower, which means potatoes are going to start growing soon, so that's really exciting. I am dealing with some Colorado potato beetles, so I'm going to have to keep a really close eye on these plants and make sure I'm checking for eggs and the beetles themselves. So right behind me you're going to see that I have a lot of broccoli. Now it is getting way too warm for the broccoli. I already harvested a lot of it. There's still some side shoots here that I can harvest. but I'm actually probably in the next couple of days just going to pull out most of the plants that I've harvested. I'm going to give them to the chickens and then I'm going to get something else planted here. I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to plant yet. I'm thinking probably some beans and maybe some more corn. I have I've already planted both of those things in my garden but I definitely can have some room for more. So that's what I'm going to do there. Then if we look at this bed, this bed is just a hodgepodge of stuff. So this was like whatever I could fit in here went in here. I have some tomato plants along the side. Um, I have onions back here. I have carrots, cabbage, and then I also have these beautiful kohlrabi plants. So this is my first time growing kohlrabi. It is in the brassica family. I'm not exactly sure how to cook it, but I know that you can eat the leaves as well. So I'm going to have to experiment with that. I'll probably be harvesting that tomorrow morning. Honestly, I let it go a little bit too late. I'm pretty sure I probably should have harvested it maybe a week and a half ago, but um, that's okay. We're going to experiment this year. Uh, behind me here, I have more broccoli. We really love our broccoli. Also, this is my third year trying to grow broccoli and the first time that I was successful with it. So um, I'm going to take some of the things that I learned from this year and use them next year. The biggest thing that I learned about broccoli was that it is a heavy feeder. So when I was growing the seedlings, I made sure to feed them regularly. And then I also um, planted them outside a lot earlier than I did previously. So I think I planted them the second week of March and honestly, and I'm in zone 6A slash 7B. We are right on the border. So you can't, I don't really know exactly which zone we're in, but, um, I think next year I'm going to try to plant them even earlier than that. We'll see. I might have to set up some cold frames or something in case it snows, but I think that's what I'm going to try next year. I guess we'll go to this bed back here. This bed also is kind of a hodgepodge of things. So in this front row, I have okra. So I have several seeds that germinated from the ones that I planted. I might try transplanting those into different areas. I also have beans. Um, and then these plants back here, I thought were cauliflower plants, but they're actually broccoli plants. So I'm going to have to um, harvest that relatively soon. And then we have more beans. And then we also have cauliflower back here. Now this cauliflower, I'm not sure I'm going to get a harvest out of it. I think that I planted it too late. The cabbage worms are having a field day on the plants. If you look at this one here in particular, it has very holy leaves. And I can see a little tiny cauliflower forming down there, but it might be infested with these cabbage worms, which I see one right here. And then let's go over to this garden bed. So I really like the size of these garden beds. You'll notice that our middle garden beds are a lot wider, but these ones are only three feet wide and then they're a lot longer. What I like about these longer beds is that I can reach across them without hurting my back. The bigger, wider beds are harder to reach the center. Uh, but here are a mixture of different tomatoes. I can't tell you what the varieties are because I just started a ton of different types and then placed them in here. None of these are cherry tomatoes, but they are all different types. I know one's like an orange tomato, and so I'm trying some different varieties. 
So the last thing in this bed is garlic, which it's my first time growing garlic. I planted this last fall. It should be ready to harvest soon. I'm just waiting for this green to die back more and then I'm gonna go ahead and harvest. Every single clove that I planted um, came up, so I'm really excited about that. We don't eat a ton of garlic. I know that's really surprising. A lot of people eat a ton of garlic, but um, we don't eat a ton of it. So I think this will be plenty for us for probably the year, but we'll see. Then this bed has all of my pepper plants in it. So a lot of these pepper plants were gifted to me from a friend. I didn't have much luck with my pepper seedlings this year. The ones over here are actually my seedlings. They were very stunted when I first started them. I think it had something to do with the potting soil that I used. So I will not be using that again. I bought it from Walmart. It was called, I think, Better Home and Garden. So if you are using an organic mix, I would stray away from that. I also noticed that I was having some aphid problems with my peppers so I went ahead and planted some dill to attract ladybugs. I also planted some marigolds to attract ladybugs. And then I had some volunteer potato plants which are these huge plants show up in these beds. I had grown potatoes in here last year. I must have missed a couple when I was harvesting. So I am leaving those in there and seeing what they do. In this bed, this has a lot of my cool weather crops. So this has lettuce, cabbage, and sweet peas in it. So a lot of this bed is gonna have to get replaced in the next week or so. The cabbage loopers are enjoying their snacks on here, on these cabbage. So some of these might end up going to the chickens, we'll see. There's a couple of them that are pretty good size. I already harvested two of them that are absolutely beautiful and I'll show you a picture of them. Uh, the lettuce needs to be pulled up as well because it is bolting. So if you aren't familiar with what bolting is, it's when a plant goes to produce seed. Plants do this when the conditions for the plant are less than ideal. Lettuce is a cool weather crop, and so when it gets too hot out, it has a tendency to want to go to seed. So the plant basically says, it's way too hot out here for me. I need to reproduce so that I can, you know, have offspring or whatever. So that's what the plant does and then what happens is that the lettuce itself becomes very bitter. This is true for any plant that is bolting but it's still edible so you can still eat it. We'll still harvest this and eat it um, but I'm definitely going to do it in the next two days. So I have some sugar snap peas that are right here. Our memory card died and while Alex ran up, ran up to get a new memory card, I've been snacking on our sugar snap peas. They are so good. They don't really ever make it out of the garden because we, I am always just snacking on them when I'm down here. Um, so it's a good healthy snack for when I'm down here. I have already planted some cucumbers here. So those will hopefully start taking off soon. I want to get them to grow on this trellis. We will see how that goes. And then over here, I have this zucchini plant. I don't know if it's a zucchini. It's some type of squash. It's a volunteer plant. I decided to let it live. And I can see that it already has a fruit here. I'm thinking it might be either a zucchini or a spaghetti squash. Then right behind me, I have two loofah plants. I thought that these loofah plants were going to die. They looked very sad at the beginning of the season. They both had very wrinkly leaves. Um, and if you're wondering what a loofah plant is, a loofah plant is what you think it is. Um, those loofah sponges that people use in the shower, that came from the loofah plant. So what I'll do is once these um, grow fruit on them, I will let them dry out. I will peel them and get the seeds out of them and use them as a sponge. So they will hopefully start trellising up this pretty soon. I wasn't sure what they were going to look like or if they were going to survive, but they do look pretty healthy now. Are you filming me eating this? Yep. <laughs> All right. The last thing in the garden is my corn. I love sweet corn and the chickens love the corn cobs. So. This is really exciting. Last year, I just test planted like five of these plants. They did really well. 
so I doubled that. And then on the far side, I planted popcorn. So Alex's mom and I love our popcorn. And so I went ahead and planted some popcorn. I also planted some beans that I'm gonna try to grow up the um, corn stalk. So we'll see how that works out. I'm not sure if I planted those close enough, but we'll see. And then I also have some beans that are gonna grow up and hopefully over this trellis. It has been pretty empty all season long, but I'm hoping that I'll get something to grow over it before the end of the season. All right, this is the new garden space. So this used to be weeds, it used to be poison ivy, all sorts of things. But we had three trees that were dead that we took down in the fall last year and we spent most of the winter cleaning all of that up. We also pulled up a ton of poison ivy in this area. I still see stuff popping up here and there which I'll have to get rid of. But the idea is that this is going to be a flower garden space in the future. This year I've kind of had my run in with animals so we ended up having to put up a fence. We originally weren't planning on doing that, um, but we had something munching on every single flower that I was putting in here. So I had maybe about 40 seed starts to begin with, and I ended up with zero after that. So we just decided to use seeds and direct sow. And since then, I have noticed some growth. So I also have some tomatoes in here, which were given to me from a friend. The tomatoes don't seem to be doing too hot in here. The soil isn't the best, it's super clayey. We did put uh, probably about a two inch layer of compost on the top, but I don't think that was enough for these tomato plants. So they might not produce very much this year, but that's okay. This is just kind of gonna be a work in progress. This is my second year having that other garden, and so the soil there is a lot better than what it is in this new one. Now I'm also on this far side, I'm planting a bunch of squash plants. Last year the squash literally took over my garden and so to avoid that this year I'm putting them in this larger space. So we have summer squash, we have butternut squash, spaghetti squash, and then we also have melons. So we have watermelon and cantaloupe which we um, grew a little bit last year. I think we only got one cantaloupe and one watermelon because I think I planted at the end of July, which how did, why did I do that? I'm not sure, but <laughs> wasn't very successful. So we're trying again this year. Um, and then I also have all the flower starts. So I don't know exactly what flowers I'm planting because Alex helped me with that. So I know I have Cosmos in here and I know I have snapdragons and that's about it. So we'll see if anything produces, but I'm not sure. And then we also have some sunflowers back there that we got from someone's yard sale for free, which is pretty cool. They had dug them up around their property and they didn't want them. So we took them, they're doing really well. And so yeah, this is the new garden space. Eventually it will be flourishing, but for now it looks pretty barren. This last garden space is right next to the chicken run. So I planted a little bit of a chicken garden. So I knew that I was gonna have issues with cabbage worms on my kale plants. So I went ahead and planted the kale next to the chickens because they absolutely love the kale so much. So my kale is doing really well, but there are a lot of worms on the backs of them. So a lot of that is just gonna go to the chickens which I'm completely fine with. That's why I put this in there. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed my garden tour. There's a lot more to come in the next couple of months. I will plan to do a garden tour maybe in August so that you can see how things have progressed and how some of my summer crops are producing. Uh, it's fun to kind of share everything that I've done. I know I haven't shared a ton of the process, but um, I'm still learning a lot and I kind of want to get that down before I share all of the details. So thanks again for watching. Make sure to click the thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Also, if you like more frequent garden updates, make sure to follow us on Instagram because I do share a lot about the garden there. See you next time.